We're back with Leo Oliva. Hey, guys. The leading man. Uh, Leo just got off of work. Why don't you tell folks what you did today? Hey, oh. guys. Uh, hi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching the short. Uh, I am a registered nurse. I just got home from the hospital. I'm an ER nurse uh, when I'm not acting. And this is my backup. This is my wife, Jenny. Uh, thank you, guys, again, for, for watching. This was an opportunity that actually came by surprise. Ray reached out, said, I have something really special that means a lot to me. Uh, and the guys that I'm shooting it with, and I'd love you to be a part of it. So then I got in touch with Justin and Carl, and it was great. I mean, the collaboration was amazing from the get-go, getting to talk about the script and getting to talk about the story. And it was, I mean, it was written so well that you could feel the emotion coming through on the page from the beginning. And the plan that they had for shooting it was, I mean, it was something I, I couldn't pass up on. So I, I feel blessed to have been able to play a part in something that, I think mattered not just to the group of us here that are on this, but I think it matters on a, on a bigger scale. You know, that idea of everybody has a story and we're not just moving bodies. We're people. And we have a background and we can't just look past that. So I think this story brings that to life, especially letting you start with seeing a homeless guy that is just let's say crazy for lack of a better word, right? Taking pictures of a doll and then you get to see where that story comes from and where it evolves. And, um, maybe maybe it gives people an opportunity to look at homeless people in a different way or even better yet, people who might have some type of different view on the world, whether it's from a psychological perspective or just, they just might be a little different than us. That's great. Exactly, exactly right. Yeah, thanks Leo, then. Couldn't have said that better. My friend Farah uh, from Michigan says, Leo needs to be in another movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's her daughter. <laughs> <That's true>. Awesome. <laughs> so our, our friend Martin Olson's on. He's a, he's a really good friend of mine um, who is a genius writer. And he's yeah. a big fan of this film. He's one of the first people that saw this when we first finished it. I shared it with him because... You know, he, I consider him kind of like a like creative mentor. Like I love getting his advice and feedback on stuff. And, and he had very, very positive things to say about it. But so he's on and he wants to know, Leo, how much did Ray and the guys tell you about Boston Dave, meaning the real Boston Dave? I got a full backstory. Um, that was one of the first things. I mean, from an acting perspective, it was reading the script and kind of putting together where it connected with me and then using the story that they broke down to fill in the gaps and to flesh out the things that were already starting to percolate when I read it the first time. Uh, but they gave me the full story. Ray shared uh, the moment of, of when uh, Boston Dave came up. And then I believe it was the four of us all sitting at the coffee shop talking about how there was a moment of like that standoffishness and then embracing it after, you know, because a random person, homeless, not homeless, doesn't matter, approaching you, trying to just make headway and connect we yeah. as a society to a certain extent are, are kind of we already distance each other uh to a certain extent and with this situation understanding that boston dave i'm guessing i don't know what he looked like but um looked pretty homeless to begin with um i think i think i would have felt like i needed to create some distance as well and then it was finding a way to make that a connection um allowing people to feel comfortable and feel connected to someone that offhand would initially feel distant with um but they sat down and they walked me through the entire thing how you guys were doing the shoot um and he just came up and approached ray trying to give her some flowers and with a note and at first it was that okay let's let's back off and then after reading everything and really feeling that connection it was, it was seeing what that arc was like that that idea of you don't want anything to do with someone and all of a sudden you want to know more about them and to a certain extent, they're not there anymore. You can go find them, right? We can go find Boston Dave, but yeah. now that you want to connect, you can't. So like a few weeks before I was walking to work and I, um, a homeless guy threw all this food all over me, basically. So, and it completely caught me off guard because I'm so, I go through life kind of just like in the clouds, I guess. And I just didn't expect it. And it just, and then a couple of weeks later, Boston Day, who was a huge guy, came up to me, and my instant thing was like the fear, and it taught me a lesson of like, you know, I can't. Not every homeless person is gonna attack me. You know what I mean? It's like he just wanted to be seen, and he just wanted to be like, 
loved I don't know what it like by giving the flowers it's such a nice gesture and my instant reaction was like well you know um it definitely taught me a lesson because after I was like oh my god he just wanted to be seen I think a true testament to the story itself and to the short was the fact that initially it was written that you kind of stepped away Ray from the flowers but then in the moment when we were all working on it there was that moment of saying Ray brought up she goes I feel like I'd actually take the flower if not we're not going to connect and yeah. Justin mm -hmm. would open to yeah definitely let's go that route and and it allowed to the, the short to take a, a different turn than what happened in real life um which mm -hmm. i think created that connection a lot easier in a story right yeah you guys brought so much to it i mean you know there's films are one thing on the page and they're obviously something different when you go out and do it and work with actors and yeah i mean i'm so grateful of you guys you guys really really dug deep and did an yeah. amazing job of finding these characters and you know it was since it was silent it was all visual storytelling so it was all in your sort of performance you know how you performed it without dialogue which um was very powerful you guys did really really good the film is uh up on the coloma productions facebook page so the page that's associated with this watch party now so you can watch it anytime now it, it's it's up it's shareable um please share it um if you like it if you enjoyed it it meant a lot to us to, to do it and make it and finally see it come together the other thing i want to say is um there is another film we got to make before the pandemic hit and changed all of our lives uh it also has ray in it has ray in it um, in fact, it was the film we were making when we met the real Boston Dave. Yes. And so that film is nearly finished. It just has some um, color cosmetic uh, work that, that I'm doing. And so we're planning on doing the same sort of thing for it uh, possibly next week. So yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll keep you posted. We'll, we'll try to get that up soon and hopefully have another hangout like this. It's really fun seeing you guys all yeah together in one place it's really it's really great to see all of you guys here thank you Mark. thank you everybody thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time